What's up guys? It is Kai the Player. Now, we have kind of did a lot in between part 2 and part 3. Now, since that part, not only have I kicked majority, if not all, the previous you people of my team off, I have a blue mange, which I have done a little bit of blue mange things to get them the magic, as well as I have a hunter, I have a morpher, and I have another archer who was an assassin initially. And the reason why I got all these enemies is because there will be at some point, and I do apologize, a video for how to get all the black mange magic while showing you on screen what mission and what tactic I use to get it to initiate. And then there will be a guide on getting all monsters for the monster bank. I don't think I'm going to do a video showing how to level up all the monsters to level 50. And then I'll have a morpher guide. So we're going to have a blue mage guide, a hunter guide, and a morpher guide. And this will serve as anybody who's trying to do the extra stuff that actually takes a lot more challenge and patientness in this game. So just be on the lookout for that. I don't know how long it's going to take me. Though I promise you when it's done, you're going to like it. So anyways, so this part we are finally checking out the Cheetah's mission. And the Cheetah's mission is where we finally bump into Ritz which is Marchie's friend from the real world. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and head to that mission. And in this mission, what's happening is, is that Ritz and her clan member, Shara, are actually in a fight with five enemies, a fighter, a archer, a thief, a monk, and a black mage. Now, when I did this, not in this video, but initially, I had some trouble with the fighter. So if you're going to do this mission and you're not going to take the time to grind out a bit and do a lot of the optional stuff that opens up after the second mission, then I strongly urge you to take out the fighter first. Now, if that's not bad enough, I believe the fighter also has strike back. You can double check that by looking at the units on the screen. So looking at the fighter, we actually don't see strike back. So I take that back. However, he is going to be the bigger problem of the group. And again, kind of get into the habit of just checking all the other enemies. If a thief has maintenance, you can't steal from them. So don't even bother. Or if they just don't have anything worthwhile, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But if you are if you are using the strategy of getting abilities early, then the white monk could be useful for a human to steal air render. And you can also get a human to steal the abilities from the archer. Again, the thief can't be stolen from, and the fighter you could steal from them. So we got a couple of units. Everyone is at a comparable level so right now i have mont blanc i have a blue mange and i have a hunter and i have a fencer right now the team is kind of average because we haven't really trained but if you watch some of my previous videos i have a whole guide on how to do what's called the perfect stat guide and the perfect stat guide is just there to where you can train your units based upon how you would want if you want to go for a magic based build there's already a video out there it should be called the perfect stats guide you could look on the channel and it's there so one of the cool things about this mission is is that while it is poses some difficulty Shara and Ritz do offer up a decent amount of support in some areas, which makes this mission not as hard. If it wasn't for them being here and also you having a limit of four enemies, then it'd be a hard mission. 
but the fighter is the one that's going to deal out a lot of damage and the white monk is going to be another enemy that's going to be a point of interest to be on the lookout for so it's going to be terrible but you could do it so i recommend you go after the fighter first then you go after the white monk and save the archer and the black mange for last if ritz and Shara didn't already take them out prior. So, when I started this mission, one thing that I wanted to do was is that I wanted to kind of get an idea of what I was up against. And after you go about it like that, then depending on your needs and how you're playing this game, you can either steal what you want from the enemies, like I mentioned earlier, or you can go about it as in tackling which enemy it'd be easiest to pick off who does the most damage the unit that's going to be the scariest is the freaking fighter so we're just getting rid of him at all costs and then worry about the next difficulty for the cpu ai they go after your weakest unit and it goes up so if you have two units next to each other the odds are they'll always go after the weaker of the two keep that in mind so some in some cases is really useful and in other cases it gets really annoying especially when you're trying to train blue magic and you don't have the luxury of controlling said enemy so it can become a real headache and there was one mission where I had to utilize the emulator properties just so that I can learn, I believe it was stare. And it was getting rather absurd to the point where I didn't think they were going to use it. And then they used it and I said, all right, it's possible. But my unit dodged. So then I had to start it over again because the odds of it happening, because he wasn't the weakest unit on the field, it was low. So, um, one cool thing that I did between this part and the previous part was, is that, like I said, I got a bunch of new end up units. This unit, the fighter right now on the screen, was an assassin. And the strat is, is to try to recruit units who have decent to above decent speed, so that way they're moving before other units, which makes and breaks an engagement, especially later on. So... Well, I would say it's more earlier on that it's really beneficial to have a fast unit. In my opinion, speed is not as important later on, though it is important depending on how you're going to go about playing this game. If you're going to be archers and move about this game from distance, then maybe speed won't be that big of a deal. But if you're going to be an attacker, or I will call it a berserker, you're gonna really want to have speed on your side so you can move in and that fighter can deal about 40 damage to our opponents we don't have enough money at this point in the game to have better equipment but you look at that the white monk is another one that is a devastator him and the fighter are the two worst enemies in this in this whole engagement the thief is whatever and the black monk is whatever but really go after the white monk and fighter then take out the archer because of the stat of like getting rid of your ability to fight back and then slowly you'll be able to take back this fight it ain't gonna be that hard so if you see a little speed up in a video's hiccup in a bit, it's because I was playing on an emulator, and I don't, I don't know. Like, so I've played this engagement several times. I think I've only died one time in recent times on this because I wasn't prepared fully. However, in comparison to the previous engagement. Your odds of dying on this isn't the same as dying in a previous mission, in my opinion. But again, the ability's still there. So, one thing I will say is, is that <laughs> I was sitting here 
trying to steal air render from this guy so that way I could just have it. That's the cool thing. If you take the time to get the steel weapon ability for your players, then when it comes to getting abilities, it should be faster for the human and the muggle. Do it. If you don't do it and you want to play normal, don't worry about it. Take your time to learn all like the action abilities and you'll see why in some ways it's kind of frustrating. But with Ritz and Shara helping out the team, we take out these guys, and that's it. And then Marchi trying to help out Ritz, and he's worried about her, but she's having the time of her life. So story update. First two missions is kind of like Marchi getting the hang of this world. Third mission, Marchi bumps into his old friend, and he's kind of like, dang, I really want to go home. So... That's his thought process when he see her. But she ain't about that life because she's having fun. Because she tells Marchi this is the world of Final Fantasy. The game. Marchi didn't know. So after this, Marchi's kind of like, dang, I'm kind of bummed out that she didn't want to go home. She didn't even mention it. So that's really it. Ritz has her reasons why she wants to remain in the game and why she's having fun. Marchi, while it isn't fully shown that he really wants to go home like crazy, he still wants to go home. It doesn't like go overboard until like a couple missions later. So really, Marchi's character is bearable right now. But to a lot of people that have played this game, they don't like Marchi or they call him the villain of the game because he ruined their fantasy because he really wanted to go back home. And you got to respect them. A kid who doesn't want to experience the fantasy means that he went through a lot. Anyway, so Rick tells him that if you want to change everything back, go ahead. But I'm not trying to help you. I won't stand in your way. She's really like, okay, I'm, I enjoy this world, but I'm not going to stand in your way. And then she contradicts herself later on when she literally stands in his way. Because he wants to change the world. So, but it's like, in some ways, was she a friend? Reward is Chris Knife and the Buster Sword. Yeah, Cloud Strife Sword. You get it in this game. <sighs> Anyways, after this mission, Elliot Sands is the next location. And then from there, you have a third mission before we get to what is known as the first boss of this game. So just... Make sure you're taking advantage of everything, and you should be fine playing this game. If not, you're going to suffer your first true defeat at the first boss. But until then, I'm Kata Player, and I'll catch you guys later.